Okay, and welcome today. Today we're going to have a, a quick new quick tip on how to actually freeze particles so we could actually tweet them and get a, a very cool kind of a, either a forest or a cloudscape and so on and so forth. Something similar to um, to being able to create uh, just a quick animation um, of clouds. Just a simple stuff like this. Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary. This is just a quick test uh, to see if the method works. But pretty much essentially that's what we're going to cover today. Um, we're not going to do the whole thing. It's just a quick tip on how to show you how to create a very fast uh, particle emitter that you can control. So in this case we have our texture that is going to be our particle and we have a particle emitter generated in Nuke. And the other thing that we have is a card that is rotating 90 degrees so his face is flat on the ground. Um, and we are emitting particles from that. Now the main issue with particles is as you emit they change constantly based on time, right? So there's a quick way of freezing these guys and be able to control them however we want. So in this case, if I want to control them a little bit easier, the only thing I need to do is after I create the particle emitter, I'm going to put a frame hold on here. And what we do with the frame hold is we tell that particle where to actually hold the emission. In this case, everything that happens after that is going to be completely static. So let's say we're working from 30 to 52. Uh, so let's say the particle emission based on 30 frames. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to hold that. Now, what happens is if I hit play, there's no more motion. Now I'm able to actually fly through my cloudscape and stuff like that if I set it up the right way. The cool thing is it's still emitting, right, and it's still working. So that means I could change my emission rate, for example, say 4, and you see that I could add now clouds. They're not moving anymore. The other thing that I could do is I could play with the velocity if I want the clouds higher or lower. And that way now you have a fully customizable um, tool that you could use in order to control your clouds a little bit different. You could tell them to last a little bit longer, a little bit less, so they accumulate more based on time. All right. Uh, you could play now with the scale, the size ranges, the mass, and so on and so forth, the rate variation as well. And you could change also the way that they get emitted. So you have different type of uh, controls that you can work with. The cool thing about this is that you can now introduce another particle emitter. And let's say we're using exactly the same texture or a different texture. Let's say for that. So let's go ahead and take that emission and say particle. Emit another particle from there. And uh, we're going to emit it from the same card. And we're going to see how we're going to work with that. So now I have exactly the same thing. Um, where I could now have two frame holds and merge these two, like a, a merge geo, because we're working with 3D elements. So now I'm able to actually merge these two particles and say in this particle I want you to hold your first frame at 20. So now you can see we could add a different texture and add randomization. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just go ahead and get another texture. So there you go. Let's add some high frequency detail there. So in this case, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm just going to say, no, instead of that being the particles, it looks the same. I'm going to add a different particle to it. And that particle will be whatever I want. Now, one cool technique that I use is I actually give frame sequences to things. So if I have a series of particles, I will actually create a frame sequence of particles to do that. Um, what that allows me to do is, let's say I have a um, frame sequence here from different clouds. Let's say 1 through 5 there. Uh, you will see it's a completely different cloud, but what that allows me to do is I will put a frame hold here. And I'm able to actually switch the particle as I'm going up and down uh, the generation here. So that means if I go, I want to use frame 5, there you go. I got my clouds that are going to be embedded within it on frame 5. In this case, I'm just using the sequence as a way of changing my particles on the fly to give me a different result. Uh, so I want to use whatever, 2, or I want to use 1. And the cool thing is I can still play this and they stay static. So let's use 5. Uh, let's use 4 now. So you could see very quickly how you could actually uh, generate your own cloud system, your own cloud field. And all that is completely um, color correctable and everything. So you could generate a very quick rig um, that you could use in order to be able to control. Uh, your cloud system and give it some a little bit of uh, a different scenario. Let's go ahead and say um, do that and there you go. So you can start tweaking those things and give your cloud system whatever you want. Say we want red, we got green, we want blue. So there you go. That's a quick way, is a quick tip um, in order to be able to generate your own cloud rigs and uh, be able to fly through them uh, however you like. So there you go man. I hope you guys enjoy it.
As an example, here's the same technique using uh, particles to create trees or kind of an atom forest. Um, essentially, we have the same technique that we used before, but a little bit more elaborated. Um, so essentially, if we look at the um, particle system, we just have an emit geometry. Where we actually emit the geo, where we use the displacement to displace the geometry to kind of create uh, um, this kind of uh, hill type of look, where the geometry is displaced upwards. And then uh, we go in and we developed a couple of the trees. Uh, so we have some particle trees that we use in a append uh, clip. So it's actually a couple of particles uh, tweaked, and then it gives me kind of a sequence that I could use in my particles. So they emit different type of trees uh, randomly. Um, you could do that also with a frame sequence. And then we have the grass as well that we could do a couple of frames, one to four. So it randomizes the grass as well. So we have some random grass blades um, generated on the plane as well. Um, a little bit of color correction and so on and so forth. And then we have our ground texture um, that is actually textured with diffuse to kind of get us this ground feel, just, just kind of dirt. Um, and then all that is piped in into Merge Geo, where it goes to Merge Particles and Ground Geo using a frame hold the same way to control the particle emission. So if we go here and we put 10, it will be the same principle that we use for the for the for the clouds. In this case, we're just generating a very quick forest with it, uh, which gives us a very nice uh, control uh, to vary based on whatever the director asks us. Then we have two lights, uh, sunlight and a fill light, and of course the render. Uh, but essentially, that's pretty much it. Um, that gives us the, uh, the base idea on how we can use particles to also generate a forest. So exactly the same technique that we use for the clouds, but in this case, to kind of generate uh, a forest. All right. I hope you like it, and this is New Quick Tips. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.